morning, everybody, and how are we all doing today? It is the 21st of April, 2024. It's a Sunday, which means it's time for our Sunday night live chat. And into that, the sun is still shining. It's beautiful weather all weekend, and we have done lots of gardening. Hope you have too. Hope you're all well. Hope you're having a great weekend. Hope you've managed to do lots and lots of stuff in the garden. If you have, let us know what you've been doing in your garden this weekend, or maybe even your allotment for that matter. Now, today, our conversation of, or our topic of conversation is going to be all about when do you sow winter veg? This was a question actually posed to me by, I think it was Scott, if I remember correctly, and um, it, I thought it would make a good, good discussion. So we will get into that. But before that, let's see. If we've actually got anybody out there. Adrian is out there saying hello, Richard and all. Good evening to you. Turbo Stream is there saying good evening, Veg Podcasters. Uh, sat on my patio just after 5 p.m. lapping up the sunny sunshine as I wait for 6 p.m. Well, that was an hour ago. He was there in waiting, ready for us to start. Uh, Bally Soon saying good evening, everyone. Good evening to you. Stuart Jackson, evening, Richard and the Veg Army. It's so nice to see sunshine all weekend. Loads done in the garden over the last couple of days. What have you been doing? It has been nice to get some sun, though, I have to say. It has been incredibly nice. Uh, Philly SBB is there saying hello, everyone. Good evening to you. Nathan is joining us, a.k.a. Allotted Chef. Good evening, all. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. Uh, seed to Table Plot 13 is there. Evening, all. YouTube name change. I hope everyone has had a good weekend. Scott, lovely to see you, Scott. Hope you are well. Hargrave Gas, evening all. Hope you've had a good week's growing. It's been so much. It's so much to talk about this week. Uh, Anna Jones, good evening, gardeners. Good evening to you. Kate is there. Good evening, Veg Army. Good evening to you. Chilly Phil, evening all. Just back from the allotment planting spuds. Sounds busy. Uh, Rebecca. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening to you. Ian is there saying, evening, Richard and all. Cold and wind today. Brr. Maybe it's been a bit of a chill with the wind, granted, but the sun is shining. It's still been nice. Uh, here we go. Digwell. You know, Digwell's always trying to teach us new languages, and this time it's the, I forget what the word of it, but he, if I decipher that, he is saying, good evening, uh, all. Hope you are well. <laughs> I've worked it out. In his language, it's Gulf, Oscar, Oscar, Delta, Echo, Victor, Echo, November, India, in November, Gulf, Alpha, La, Lima, Lima, Hotel, Oscar, Papa, Echo, Yankee, Oscar, Uniform, Alpha, Romeo, Echo, Whiskey, Echo, Lima, Lima. I've got there in the end. Evening, everyone. Good evening to you. Digwell's also saying good evening all. Hope you are well. Uh, Kate says, Hotel India, Delta India, uh, Whiskey Echo Lima. Hi, Digwell, he's, she's saying there. Uh, Nigel, Muddy Boots, evening all. Still on the allotment. What are you doing on the allotment? Mind you, if I remember correctly, your allotment is the other side of your back fence anyway. Nice and easy for you to get through. Uh, Jenny is there. Hello, everyone. I hope you are all well and have had a great week. Excellent stuff. So let's get into it, shall we? Tonight, the topic up for discussion is all about when do you sow your winter veg? And I thought where we would, we would tackle this question from the beginning is what is a winter veg? I'm going to ask you to, to answer that for you and I'll give my definition of what a winter veg is while you come up with that. For me a winter veg is something that you would harvest throughout the winter. Now as grow your owners, as somebody that's trying to grow all our own food all year round, being able to grow veg through the winter is a key thing and I want to be able to go out to my allotment, my garden and harvest food all year round. Uh, so for me, some of the winter veg would be things like sprouts, cabbages. I'm just looking down because I have made notes. I'm going to bring that up here. Sprouts, cabbages, cauliflower, parsnips, carrots, lettuce, 
kale, calabrese or broccoli, uh, salad leaves, purple sprouting broccoli. But what about you? What do you think is a winter veg and have I missed anything off? Thermo Stream says, I have been concentrating on my home garden this weekend. It needed a massive weeding session. It's been neglected since I got my allotment, making a loan maintenance woodland garden. That sounds like a good idea. Love to see some pictures of it when it is completed. And I, if it's funny enough, I, I've got to admit, I do find it difficult to try and divide my time between my allotment and my home garden lately because one tends to get more attention than the other and then the other one gets neglected. So I give it a bit more attention. Uh, but, but yeah, low maintenance, I think, is quite a key thing for some of us who have allotments or gardens and uh, busy lives. Toby Stream says, I'm still popping to the allotment note, just keeping it tidy this year. Funny enough, I've I've made a video to come out later this week where I talk about how my allotment, I've tidied it up enough that it's just maintenance now. Apart from planting out veg and watering, of course, and harvesting, it's a case that I'm just into maintenance. So regular mowing, regular weeding, regular watering. And the allotment then becomes quite easy to look after. The key thing, though, visit every day. For me, that's a key thing, making plenty of regular visits. Only 20 minutes, half hour every day, you get a lot done. Money Boots, winter veg for me. Any crops I harvest late autumn onwards. So that, that would be my definition. Any vegetables that we harvest in late autumn onwards. And there's a huge list of things that we can actually do. As I said, some of the ones I've listed, Brussels sprouts, cabbage but i also included things like lettuce i'm thinking about it spring onions because we can harvest those through the through the winter months as well and and that's i think quite important to to remember that we can grow these sort of foods all year round terry stream says i sow brussels cabbage cauliflower in my seabed on the allotment nothing has sown through yet i would say things are a little bit slow this year it's a little bit behind so don't panic but I think they will get there. Uh, Jenny says, I'm making a woodland garden too. Make a garden bird, blah, blah, blah. Making a gar made a garden bird roosting box today to go into it. That sounds fantastic. Looking forward to seeing what you guys do with your woodland garden. Talking of birds, uh, about, what was it, four o'clock, I guess, this afternoon. I was stood by my back window, by my back door, had... Um, Roxy was sat there as well, and on the ground was hundreds of starlings all going through our lawn. I cut the grass yesterday, so they were probably picking up bits of grass or looking for worms and things like that. But there, the grass was just full of all these tiny little birds. It's quite a pleasure to see sometimes, I have to say. Uh, Nigel says, carrots still harvesting from last year's sowing. Same here, same here. I'm leaving some to flower and set their own seed, however just so I can try and get some more. Digwell says, most of my winter veggies are, for me, are from storage. Made a few residual sprouts, spuds, cabbages, but not really planned. Well, this is a show for you, because I still think, well, I think most vegetables are still time to sow. So let's get into it. Let's get into when is it the right time to sow some winter vegetables. So let's start off with the one on the top of my list, I think everybody knows this as a winter vegetable, the Brussels sprout. Brussels sprouts are an absolutely a, a marmite vegetable, aren't they? They either like them or hate them. I quite like them. I do think a lot of it is down to cooking and, and um, how you look after them, but I quite like them. I think they taste of mini cabbages. So to get our winter veg, when is the best time to sow? Because we can sow from January right up to about beginning of May to get Brussels sprouts. But the ones we sow in January, I generally find they become available in the autumn. They're ready for harvesting in the autumn. Uh, and the ones, if we were to sow some now, they probably won't be ready until probably March next year, if you're lucky. So if you want them for, let's say, Christmas, Christmas dinner, you probably would want to have sown them March time. That's what I would thought. What's your thoughts on Brussels sprouts? And if anybody wants to add anything else to any other vegetables about when to sow, let us know in the comments. 
See, uh, Scott says, I have sprouts and kale sown the cabbage. I have sown our summer types for winter. I have sown our summer types for winter cabbages. Are we looking at things? Oh, wait, sorry. I, I'm, I'm understanding it now. I have so, the cabbages he's sown are the, for the summer. He's asking for winter cabbages. Are we looking at things like savoy and red cabbages? Savoy cabbages can and savoy and red cabbages can be winter, but so can some other types of cabbages. To be honest, the best thing to do is it's all down to the variety. Then check the variety and see what that says on the packet before you sow them. Um, but I would say for cabbages. We're really going to be sowing those May, maybe even June for winter crops. I, my thoughts on that. I'd love to hear anybody else's thoughts on that as well. Turbo Stream says, I have four trays of onions and leeks at home after the disaster last weekend when my small, small green, greenhouse blew over. I'm playing the leek onion guessing game now. All the seedlings ended up on the patio. Yep. I know exactly how you feel. My shelf in my greenhouse fell over and I uh, I lost quite a few of them. That being said, so when you say your small greenhouse, is it one of those things that go together like tents and you put over this cover to try and hold everything together? Because they are notorious for being blown over in the wind. I hate the things. I've been talking about cold frames and even looking for cold frames this week because I want to get another cold frame in my garden. They just haven't been available as much. Turbo Stream says, my garden is mostly... Oh, uh, talking to Jenny there. Digwell says, there are many types of varieties to sprout to suit the plan harvest dates. You've, got, you've actually got a very good point there. Does some... Some types of sprouts and some of all these vegetables can be quick, but um, some can also take some are also a bit longer. It, again, it, that boils down to the variety of veg of the variety of that particular vegetable as to what you're growing. Key thing is read the packet. Richard Golden has joined. Hello, all. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. Lovely to see you. Uh, Savoy are a great winter cabbage. They are indeed. Uh, God, that makes no sense. That made God. That made no sense. Sorry. Um, yeah, over oh, your comment earlier. Yeah, no, I got there. I got there. Uh, Nigel says late May sowing for my winter cabbage and cauliflower. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. Well, late May is when I would sow my winter cabbages, my winter cauliflowers, but that, we have got to make sure we use the winter cabbages or the winter cauliflowers. That being said, all year round is a good cauliflower for sowing all year round, for, particularly for the winter. Uh, what have we got? Turbo Stream says, I'm not bothered about the brassicas as I don't like them that much. My overwintered cauliflowers were decimated by slugs. That is one of the problems with winter veg, I have to say. So there are slugs and snails, which are hungry at that time of year, as are pigeons. But uh, there's lots of things we can do about it. And I'm I'm definitely having some good results using the grazers slug and snail treatment. So I'm basically going to be using that from, from, from now on in. Uh, uh, Robson Lockman Garden says, good evening all. Hope you've had a great weekend and an even better weekend. All living for the weekend, or many of us are anyway. Um, uh, Kate says, I've just ordered a new cold frame ready. I have lots of wildlife in the garden, which I love, but I know I will be interested in my seedlings. Yes, I, that's true. Where did you get your cold frame from? Because I have been, yesterday I got the urge we went, Amanda and I went, and Roxy actually, we went out to several garden centres. I wanted to get one of the like three tiered cold frame, wooden, you know, not one of the plastic ones, but a wooden cold frame with three shells in it. I wanted to get one of those. We went to several different garden centres and only one garden centre sold them. And it was quite a small one and it, it was very expensive. So I'm really, really looking around for a decent cold frame now. Um, oh, she goes on to say, got mine from Wayfair. 
I did see that. That might be something we look at in the future. Bumblebee Adventures here. Hey all, good evening to you. Hope you are well. We're talking about when do you sow your winter veg tonight. Derbo Stream says it's a small four tier one just to bring a few plants and harden things off. It survived the previous storms okay. I moved it by the back door and have a slab on the bottom tray. I feel your pain. I'm not a fan of those, that, that some of them, because they are very easy to get blown over. But uh, I feel your pain. It does happen, doesn't it? Things do get blown around um, to stop and can be a problem. Kate says, I'll be using the strolch again for slug prevention this year. Works well for me. I've not tried the strolch for, for the, the slug strolch, but um, I'm glad to, it's interesting to hear it's actually worked. Uh, I'll have to look into that at some point. Bethan's Kitchen and Garden says, evening all, good evening to you. Stuart Jackson says, I filled up the veggie pod six bags later. Now just need to put some plants in it. They do take a lot of compost, and they're very heavy with the compost to try and move them, aren't they? Uh, Ian says, try Robert Dyer's for the cold frame. I did think I did look online. I just can't believe that even B&Q, you have to order them. You can't just go into a, into a B&Q and buy them anymore. You have to order them. What is the world coming to? It's all going online. God damn it. I wanted to go into a shop, actually see it before buying it. Can't do it anymore. Just can't do it anymore. Uh, Digwell says, Beth, Beth and over winter spuds. She does. Yeah, I fell for that trap um, when she mentioned it. She meant over winter says spuds. Fantastic. Um, Turbo Stream says, the onions leaks have perked up since I potted them off. So I will know which is what, hopefully. Fantastic, fantastic. Leeks is one I haven't actually put on the on my notes. So leeks I would class as a winter veg. Now, leeks are one of those vegetables that I grow a lot of, and I certainly try and grow a lot of. Uh, I love my leeks, absolutely love my leeks. I sowed a batch in January. Um, I'm sowed a batch in February. I, sowed a, I don't think I sowed any in March, but I've got to sow some more. Again, leeks you can sow. Right up till June, I've had success sowing in, in June, but getting them through the winter can be a little bit challenging. What's your experience with how late do you sow leeks to get them through the winter? Uh, Kate says, I'll never use one of those plastic cold frames again. Slightest breeze and it falls over. I'm the same. I'm exactly the same. I will not use one of those again. I've seen them. And they're pretty cheap, but I just won't use them because they do just blow over so easy. Um, that's why I wanted a, a decent, solid wooden one. Uh, Digwell says, b and are now a reseller venue for other retailers. They advertise them all, but only stock their own. It drives me mad. It is driving me mad because I would have went to not just b and but Homebase and uh, Wix. Um, as well as several garden centers yesterday to try and get one. I wanted to move, well, I wanted to move some more of my seedlings out from my greenhouse. I've got them in a fridge now, but an old bottle fridge that's in the garden. I'm using that as a grow, uh, a, a, a cold frame. But I wanted to get them out of the greenhouse to start freeing up some space. And that's why I wanted a decent cold frame. They're just not available anymore or not easy to get hold of anymore. Stuart Jackson says, I sow more French beans, runner beans, and more peas this weekend as well. He's been very, very busy this weekend. Uh, Rob's a lot of garden. You only get what you pay for. I agree. I do completely agree. There's one garden center. It's not near us, so we didn't go to it yesterday, in all honesty. But they were selling a very, very good um, cold frame. Very, very solid, quite a bit taller than what we were looking at, but it was nearly 200 quid, which in hindsight ain't a bad price now we think about it. Um, might have to sweet talk the wife about getting that. Uh, Joe's Patch has joined. Hello and welcome. Hey, is Red Acre a decent winter cabbage? Yes, yes, I would say it is. Um, you know. <laughs> What more can I say, really? It is a decent winter cabbage. I, I, I have grown it in the past. Fairly flavorful, fairly easy to grow. Uh, but 
we'll throw that out there and see what anybody else says as well. Turbo Stream says, my winter veg mostly is at things I can freeze. I sowed some parsnips last week. I sowed some last part of them. I sowed some parsnips last week. The leeks are in the seed bed in the seed bed are showing through. Yeah, I sowed some parsnips last week as well. But in fact, that's another thing. Um, another thing I want to throw out there then: parsnips. When do you sow your parsnips? Because that's actually something that I'm discussing on the podcast tomorrow. A lot of people do have trouble eating parsnips to germinate. I I think I said. When I put the podcast, the Supporters Club podcast out the other day, one of the problems I think people have with parsnips is the soil can often be a little bit too cold. So uh, trying to trying to keep them warm or trying to make them of a decent temperature is a key thing when it comes to parsnips. And that's why often in the May, end of my April, sorry, May is when I get a good chance for sowing our parsnips. I'm really struggling with my words tonight. Apologies, everyone. Uh, Nigel says, less and less companies are holding stock. People go to beauty items and then buy them online because it's cheaper. I am also guilty of it. Me too. But sometimes I want to have a look at something before I buy it. Um, so I can make the decision as to whether or not it is worth buying. Plus, I wanted it yesterday because I could have got it set up and going, uh, ready for today. Buy good and buy once. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. Uh, this week's challenge, making wooden cauldron frame with shelves. And there we go. I haven't even asked for a mission for this for next week, but there's one already there. Make a wooden cold frame with shelves. Yeah, we can look into that. That's If everybody agrees with that for next week's mission, that I can do. See to table plot 13. I haven't grown winter radishes before. Things like daikon. Can they be left in the ground over winter? They can be. Um, you do have a tendency that they could, of course, get too frozen in the ground and rot and then bugs come in. But daikon, da daikon radish, uh, I think you usually sow that July to September to get through the winter. Um, and it grows nice. It, Nice, big, thick radish. It's actually very good for breaking up land as well. Uh, if you uh, if, or breaking up soil, if your soil is compacted, it's very good at, at trying to drill holes through that and get it going. Joe's Patch, my parsnips are in and up. Fantastic. Whereabouts are you, Joe? Um, that's always handy to know. Rough, rough, rough area. Stuart Jackson says, good cold frames are hard to find. I would suggest making one yourself. What? Making one yourself cheaper and stronger. I think I'm going to have to. I really do think I'm going to have to. It's just disappointing because I just wanted to to get one done and built. You know what I mean? Just wanted to get it done. Um, but yeah, a lot of chef or Nathan chard is a great for winter veg. Indeed, it is. I've got several. Well, we've been growing chard right throughout the winter, which has now really started putting on plenty of leaf. It's delicious as well. I quite like it. We're, we're eating quite a few meals of chard, and it's yellow chard. Of course, there's the. I think chard is often overlooked, but it looks great. The red, yellow, white stems that you can get from different varieties. There's a peppermint chard and things like that that are incredibly, incredibly good. They look good on the garden, don't they? Rubs a lot of garden. My parsnips are still in from last year. Funny story, I had some parsnips I sowed last year. They didn't germinate because I, I cleared all the parsnips out. They've germinated this year, funnily. And I think that's just the seed that was left in the soil. I'm hoping it's not a biennial thing because that would be disappointing. I think they just seed that was left in the soil but looks like we're going to get some decent parsnips this year and i'm going to be sowing a few more uh well i sowed some uh thursday as you will hear on the podcast tomorrow mid-april for parsnips and a second sowing if needed early may yep i'm i'm about right with that uh nigel says i do a late sowing of leeks may june because by the time they are a decent size for planting out they miss the second batch of allium leek miner there we go just goes to show how late you can actually sow leek um good advice there good advice there thank you 
Kate says, agreed, Nathan. Chard is also such a beautiful bench to have as well. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. Uh, Turbo stream. Should we type our messages in reverse so when you read them out, it makes sense? I am having one of those days today. I'm having one of those days. Uh, Bethan says, I say parsnips any time from now. I chip mine first, so when I plant them in the ground, I know they have at least germinated. So a lot of people are saying they're sowing their parsnips from now on in, which tallies up with me. Joe, whose heads are up, is in sunny Devon, so he's a little bit further south. Probably gets a little bit warmer weather than what most of us have. Um, so, yeah, I think if he can do it, we can, and his are up, it shows it's a good time for that. Another shout out, oh, good shout, Jenny. Another vote for making our own cold frame as a challenge. Well, I don't have to ask, do I? We've got that sorted for next week. Digwa says, I went to the Oakley shop in Bristol to see a pair of sunglasses I fancy, tried them on, etc. They brought online for £40 less. We're all guilty of it, I know, but there's still times when you just want to get something. It does, in some ways, it's making us not having it in a shop or even in a garden centre, it's making us want to buy online more. That makes sense. Turbo stream, I have two sheets of twin wool to make into a cold frame. Another winter job that got pot off yeah i could i do need some twin wall polycarbonate now but we'll, we'll see what we can do um now digwell saying this is to scott but it tallies up with what we we're talking about the daikon radish just finished my mooley and black radish from 2023 not intended to be overwintered but they did it has been quite a mild although wet winter to be fair um, but when did you sow them, Digwell? When did you sow them in 2023 for them to still be in the ground now? Nigel says, I sow plastic direct in the ground in prepared, sifted soil, five seeds per station and cover for the first few weeks to keep the soil warm. Cut off the excess seedlings once they're about three to five centimetres high. Excellent. Excellent. When, when do you sow yours, Nigel? When do you sow your parsnips? Uh, Toby Slim says, "I made a slot of, of and I made a slot and crumbled the soil back in for my parsnips and sowed under upturned guttering last year. This year, sorry, Turbo Stream always has troubles getting his parsnips to germinate, which is a, a often problem. I will admit, I will admit." Uh, Anne Wright says, "My dad's wooden cold frame definitely paid for itself. DIY project sides were oak planks." and sliding glass tops were old, heavy window frames. We're still going strong after 50 years. So the cold frame I brought probably 12 years ago died five years ago. So, you know, just goes to show, doesn't it? Probably making the own is going to be much better. However, this old bottle fridge, the glass door, the fridge with glass doors I'm using at the moment, it's doing a pretty damn good job, if I do say so myself. Uh, Rob says, I don't grow many, but I sow five in a small hole that hold them wait and see. Talking about parsnips there. So we've said that parsnips sow now. Cabbages towards the end of May, depending on where you are. Uh, cauliflowers in that same area. What about carrots? We've spoken about carrots a bit, and I think carrots are quite a good one to sow and grow throughout the winter i mean would you class them as a winter veg i would because if you're harvesting them then they are due to come out uh i harvested them over winter then they are due to come out over winter they are winter veg but if your ground is frozen they're very difficult to get out but i would still class them as a um a winter veg when do you sow your carrots to grow to harvest through the winter um money boots past it usually so main onwards as near our last predicted frost dates yeah <laughs> so that nigel being near uh in the west midlands that's sort of a bit further north than me kind of makes sense with where we think we should be sowing these things depending where you are on in the uh in the country 
Uh, Digwell says black radish and mooly was sown on the 27th of July in the veggie pod. Did they stay in the veggie pod this week? Um, did they stay in the veggie pod over winter as well? Uh, the veggie pod is pretty good for winter veg, I have to say. It does keep things quite warm in there. Um, Turbo Stream, last year was the problem year for parsnips. Previous years where I came, my late friends complimented me on my parsnips the first year. Oh, there we go. There we go. Just goes to show it can be done. Bill and Bell's alumnus has joined. See you streaming and mowing yesterday. Hopefully get some more wood chips soon. Uh, Bill and Bell are on my same allotment. Uh, lovely to see you. I was, um, I was asked if you were still around the other day, funnily enough. So um, good to see you. Good to see you. I, I did see you, but you look very, very busy. Um, but yeah, stream and mowed the grass yesterday. Do we need some more wood chip? I'm hoping that's going to be delivered soon. It is running down quite nicely. Uh, Nigel says, my cold frame was rescued from a plot from an old school gardener who sadly passed away. It's made from scaffold planks and has double glazed units, excuse me, for top light. Need to get some windows, don't I? Need to get some windows. Uh, did you do a video on sowing parsnips where you called out the soil, says Scott to Nigel. I thought that was a good way of sowing them. Uh, Amanda has joined. Sorry I'm late. I've been watching the football. Nice to see you all. What is the theme today? Sorry, I've missed it. It's winter veg. When do you sow your winter veg? And so far we've got, well, we've got cabbage to be sown in May, parsnips now and on to May. Uh, I'm asking when do you sow carrots? There was a daikon or moody or black radish that was sown in July last year as well. That grew from the winter. Jenny says carrots once a month from now on in buckets. Easy to harvest late carrots and protect them from the rain, etc. Excellent. Excellent. Yes, carrots are definitely one that we've got to sow quite regularly. They can be sown quite late as well, can't they? Um, July on even. Uh, what have we got? Bethan says hi to Bill and Bell. Digwell says yes, in the veggie pod from sowing, sowing to harvesting, but not sown as a winter veg. They just lasted a long time. I did the same with my beetroot, funnily enough. I sowed those in my veggie pod. And uh, what what we what we found, what I found, I made quite a late sowing of, of beetroot, actually thinking about it, but they've grown right throughout the winter. We're still harvesting them now. Um, saying about the veggie pod, it just seems to keep them warm as well. Stuart Jackson says, my parsnips will be down in paper pots this year. This way, that way, <coughs> excuse me, this way we don't, they don't have to push up through the clay soil. Clay soil is a real problem for parsnips, I've noticed as well. Uh, Facebook user, Amanda, sorry. Lovely. I'll add it to my to-do list while everyone is shouting out. Fantastic. Uh, right. I tell you what, let's go to our sew along video for this week. Uh, talking of the veggie pod kind of makes sense. And this week it is our radish. Right, guys, it's time for this week's sew along. And this week I decided to sew some radish. And I've, I've got to admit, I quite like radish. They are a bit of a marmite. Some people love them, some people hate them. I quite like them, but I do find that it is crucial to keep them moist to get the best tasting uh, radishes. So, as I said, radishes are incredibly easy to grow. They're one of the easiest plants to grow, one of the easiest vegetables to grow, but they are often thrown in with kids growing. That has its own problems in my own opinion because I don't know many children that actually like radish. But nonetheless they are still I think well worth growing. To sow, I've sown mine in my veggie pod and all I've done is I've opened up the veggie pod, I've made a, a drill about one and a half centimetres deep and I've scattered a few seeds into them. We've then backfilled and all we've got to do now is keep that soil moist and pretty soon they will germinate and pretty soon, in as little as six weeks, probably nearer two months, we will get radishes. In the meantime, what we've got to do is obviously thin them out to about one every one centimetre. You can eat the thinnings, of course. And 
I also will now sow radishes every week, every two weeks, to try and ensure that we keep radishes all year round. We do use them quite a bit in various cooking methods and things like that, and I think they are well worth growing. In terms of care, they don't need much in the way of feed because they're such a short-term crop. They are a member of the brassica family, but again, I don't worry too much about trying to grow them in brassica beds or anything like that. I just grow them in whatever we have. And, and that's it, really. They, they are so, so easy. Highly recommend you grow them. They can grow outside. They can grow in beds. They can grow in raised beds. They can grow in pots. They can grow anywhere, even on your windowsill, if you wanted to. So what I want to see from you all now is to go and sow lots of radish. And let me know, if we sow them this week, who's the first to harvest any radish? Right. Back to the studio. There we go. That's our radishes sown. And uh, I was going to see if anybody noticed it. Who's a dirty boy? Nigel spotted it. I've been doing some gardening now. I wiped my face because I was so sweating. And I thought I'd go and do that video without realising I put a mud all over my face. Mm -hmm. um, until I brought it onto and I'll, I'll pull it into the editing. And I thought, oh, we've got to leave it like that, haven't we? Uh, just goes to show I was doing some work in the garden today, is all we, all we can say. Um, on that note, Digwell says, radishes are great to sow mixed with other seeds like carrots as a pop-up before the carrots as a drill marker. I I have heard people do that, and I tried doing it, and it, I didn't really find it made much difference because the trouble I had... Um, the radishes, you know, you're looking six weeks before you're harvesting them. Okay, the carrots are might be up, but you're not gonna you're gonna disturb the carrots. Was my thinking, or what I found. So, uh, yeah, that, that they can be used. Um, I'd love to see how you do it at some point, Digwell. Perhaps make a video on that. That would be great. Bethan says I planted beetroot in my greenhouse for overwintered, but they have just bolted. That doesn't surprise me actually, because it has been rather warm in the greenhouses lately. Turbo Stream says my little seabed was made from pallet wood and an off cut of veggie mesh. It seems to work okay. I must admit, I will make a proper cold frame this summer, hopefully. Well, I think I will be making one over this next week. My only, I've got plenty of wood. My only thing I'm trying to think of is what I can use for the glazing. Uh, Bumblebee Adventure is laughing. Scott is saying it looks like you have been weeding with your face. Um, yeah, it, it happens, doesn't it? It does just, it, it, it's a sign you've been working in the garden, is all I can say when you get covered in mud. Uh, Turbo Stream says, I've never grown a decent radish just like lettuce. I think, I think the the key thing I've learned with radish is that keeping the soil moist at all times. If it gets even the slightest bit dry, it tends to lead to the radish getting quite woody. But if it's moist, that's when you get the big or the decent sized radish pretty quick. Just getting that compost really, really moist at all times leads to decent radishes. Uh, Joe's Patch says, love radish, got French breakfast, nearly ready, and royal purple, purple just up. Really like cherry bell, but no seeds at the mo. I'm with you on that. Um, I'm totally with you on that. You know, they are delicious, aren't they? Uh, sliced up in a nice salad. Oh, I can't wait to get into those radishes and start eating them. As I say, I will sow those pretty much every week from now on in. Uh, <laughs> Nigel says, searching for truffles. Not in my garden, not in my mushroom allergy. Uh, Turbo Stream says, I've brought a packet of little gem lettuce this week, a waste of £2, excuse me, 25 no, It's not a waste. It's not a waste. I I think the, I think your trouble is they get a little bit too hot in your, your porch, and that's why they bolt so quickly. Um, plenty of moisture. Keep that soil, the, the ground moist, and I think you'll end up with some half decent lettuces. Jenny says the best radishes I've ever grown grew under the cover of the peas and then one of them I munched too. I again that makes sense. It's I don't think radishes like getting hot, they like being shaded out, they like cool, wet, or moist soil. 
but that's the key to radish. Uh, Scott says, my issue with radish is sewing them too thick and then spent ages and then ages spent on thinning them out. That does happen, but you can eat the thinnings. Don't forget that. You can eat the thinnings, so you will make the most of it uh, anyway. They're not quite full size, but go out on a daily basis and check them. That's all I can say. Right, let's come back to when do you sow your winter veg? We've we've discussed parsnip, we've discussed cabbage. Did we get we got a, a bit of an answer for carrots? Kale. No, I've made an, a bit of a note about kale because kale we pretty much sow right up till September. But if we sow them in September, they're going to be too small, not strong enough to really get through the winter. So if you're growing kale to get through the winter. You don't want to sow it any later than July. We've got quite a bit of kale at the moment waiting to go in down on the allotment. But uh, we will be making, again, sowings probably on a monthly basis to try and get different types of kale to get us through the winter as well. But for me, yeah, kale right up. Did the screen just do something weird there? Kale right up until, I would say, July for winter. But after that, it's going to be for cut and come again, salad sort of type of thing. Uh, Digwell says, no, cam no comments now. Kale is the devil's food. So he doesn't like kale. Rob's well, and Garden, we are not big fans of radish. Well, there we go. We like it. I mean, it is a, a barmite. It is a marmite. Um, it is a marmite vegetable. He also doesn't like kale. Kale is a Marmite vegetable too, I think it's safe to say. Um, I just suddenly, I keep seeing that the screen change, flick or something. Is that just me? Uh, what else have we got? Jenny says, I also grow lettuce under my climbing beans in the shade. Doesn't surprise me. I do think, um, I think all these are moisture loving plants. They love being quite cool, and that's why it comes about. Uh, not a big fan of chard either, says Rob Salutman Gun. Let's talk about chard as well. We, I, I've, I've said my piece on kale. I don't know when anybody else says kale, uh, but what? When does ev anybody else uh, sow chard for winter? Um, let me know that. Digwell says yes, it flickers like a sideways shuffle. Yeah, that's what I keep seeing. I think, I wonder if my cable's just slightly loose. I'll have a look at that a little bit later on. I won't do that now. Uh, Jenny says, I don't often plan winter veg sowing times as I normally successfully sow from now till October. So normally there are plants in and growing away. I don't stress about it as normally as I normally store a lot of vegetables. That's a, a good point. A successional sowing is something we try and do a lot of. Um, but like, like I say, radishes I sow on pretty much a weekly basis. Uh, salad leaves on a monthly basis. Lettuce on a monthly basis. Um, cabbages, cauliflowers will pretty much be sown on a monthly basis. Peas on a monthly basis. Uh, lots of things like that that we sow successionally to try and make sure we always have them coming in. Uh, Jenny says, I will sow most herbs all year round. I do myself as well. I've got to sow a load of basil to go in the greenhouse soon, actually. Um, on that note, on that note. Uh, aliens are watching, are they? Are they? Well, uh, love to know what they think about all this growing veg stuff. Uh, by the way, I I was when I was I, I meant to say after oh, sowing the radish uh, for next week, I'm probably going to sow pumpkin for the sow along. If anybody is interested in sowing those next week and see how we get on, um, I haven't done any photos of all the seeds on the previous sow alongs because apart from the courgettes from last week, not much has really changed. But uh, yeah, lots going on with the sow alongs there. Um, yeah, so chard. When do you sow chard for growing through the winter for your winter veg? That was the next question I've asked. Um, 
We've touched upon lettuce and salad leaves as well. Again, there's something that I successfully sow. Every month I sow some of the winter lettuces in the winter, of course, to make sure we get winter lettuces or winter salad leaves. And things like lamb's lettuce, spinach as well. These are all good ones to sow and grow in whatever you may be growing them in for the winter winter as well. Um Purple sprouting broccoli, we can be sowing now. Not strictly a winter vegetable, but it's it'd be ready for spring next year, but it will grow right throughout the winter as well. Um, what else? Cauliflower, we've, we've said about all year, something like all year round, uh, grow all year round. Uh, Rob's a lot and gone. They want to know where to pot, where, what, what to pot with their smash. Sausages. <laughs> smash. I haven't had that in years. Do they still make smash? I haven't seen it for years. I used to love that as a child, but to be honest, it is just mashed potato, isn't it? Pumpkin and squash. <coughs> There's a lot of vegetables that people don't like. Perhaps that's a subject that uh, we might we might discuss. Um yeah, I think that might – that actually, we're going to do that next week. I'm going to get rid of a subject I was going to talk about next week. Next week, we're going to talk about what vegetables can you not stand. A bit of a different one, but I think it worked well. Tabo Soup says, I sowed some chard last week along with beetroot. I have spinach grown, sowed some French beans two weeks ago, but they are they still are not showing yet. French beans can be a little bit slow to germinate. They're one of those – vegetables that you think nothing's happening and then all of a sudden they will bounce in um i'm guessing they were the french beans i sent out but i could be wrong um a lot of cooks i'm so confused i've just been trying to find you on other channels only on facebook i've got chard which self-seeded to the ground just direct sowed more this week love chard um, I should be on YouTube. Yeah, I must be on YouTube because loads of people are watching me on YouTube. I'm on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, we might be going on Instagram. And by the way, that reminds me, I believe today is going to be the last time we're going to be able to stream into the Facebook group. If you are watching in the Facebook group, you might have to watch on the Facebook page. I, but I, I will try and add links to make it easier for everybody to see. Uh, basically, YouTube is tightening up a few things and, and what have you, which is really, really annoying. But uh, we're always on YouTube. We might be able to go live on Instagram as well if I do a few things instead. But um, on a whole, it's it's on, a, on YouTube or Facebook page. Um, Jenny says pumpkins are squ and squash are on my favourites lists. Super delicious, absolutely. A lot of cooks marrow. Hate marrows. Took two years of growing them before I thought about it. Save that for next week. But I'm with you. I don't like marrows now. I think about it. That's one. Next week we're going to discuss what veg don't you like. That's going to be a good one. Uh, I also say butternut squash from last year's seeds, but they haven't germinated yet either. Um, yeah, just be a bit patient. It might still be a little bit too cold for those, uh, depending on where they are. But be patient. I think they will just jump through. Um, Rob says, before I had my first lobin, the only veg I would eat is cauliflower. Yeah. I do actually think when you grow your own, a lot of vegetables you think you don't like taste so much better. Uh, Instagram is great for lives. Yeah, but because of software, because I stream to several channels at once, they've only just allowed third party. And I think we can only do an hour on Instagram. So we'll see how we'll, we'll give it a try. We'll see what happens next week and if we can set it up. Uh, Lotman Cooks, French beans, they're fine to be a bit slower. You don't want them outside just yet. Frosty, frost, frost warnings. They are tender. Um, yeah, yeah, th that was who was it? Um, Tybo Stream was saying about his uh, French beans, they they are a bit slow. Don't worry, is there still times? 
Uh, Digwell says there is a brand of instant mash called Idaho. Many flavors, butter, herby, etc. Well worth keeping a pack or two in a cupboard for emergencies or even sticking up to a soup or stew. Good advice. Good advice. Um, yeah, especially I don't want to go down this scaremongering route at all because I don't for one believe this is going to happen. But there's a lot of talk about going into World War Three with Russia, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And this is, gets me thinking about that do we go into rationing and things like that. And these sort of things might become apparent. I really don't think it's going to happen though. So I'm not going to go down the scaremongering route. Uh Imbeno says, going to try and grow tomatoes in Malaga. We'll sow them before the next show. I think you might get away with it. Got a slightly longer season, so you might get away with it there, Ian. Um, let us know how you get on. That'd be great. Marrow Chutney is a game changer. Tried that. But I did not like Marrow. Uh, Turbic Stream, the beans are inside the house along with courgettes and squash. My gherkins that sown two weeks ago haven't germinated. Courgettes I sowed last week, only one or two have only just germinated today. So be patient. I think they'll be okay. Digwell says, I did a marrow chutney video. And Scott says, no bad vegetables for me. It's just a case of finding the right way of cooking. Save that for next week. Save that for next week. Now, I'll tell you what. Let's have a look at the photos that you guys have been posting. Always love seeing your photos. And I should just say... Um, that if you want to share your photos, then please post them in our Facebook group or you can send them to me via email or in, uh, on social media. So first of all, Nathan is hoping for some good pears this year. There's been a lot of pear flowers this year. I think it is going to be a good year for pears. Lots of moisture in the ground over winter has helped, I believe. Susan is creating a food for us. She's just taken on a new garden. It's a bit of a funny shape, having a few problems as well with weed membrane left behind under the soil. But she's creating a food forest and it's looking fantastic. Uh, Amanda has shared her plot shot for April. It looks very, very tidy, I've got to say. It looks like it's really going to be a good growing space this year. Plenty of things going on. Um, we just need it to warm up a little bit more before we can really start using these things, aren't, aren't we? Uh, Nicola's spring bulbs are looking fantastic. Yeah, I don't, <coughs> I do tend to specialize in vegetable gardening, as you know, but I do have a thing about spring bulbs, tulips, and daffodils. When they're like this, I do like them. I was going to go to Arundel Castle today, but ran out of time because I wanted to do more gardening. But look fantastic, don't they? Uh, Stuart has moved his, his veggie pod and loaded it up with fresh compost. He had to dig out all the compost, move it, and then load it up with compost. For those that don't know, veggie pod is a a, a, a a raised garden bed. I've got three. I think they are brilliant ways of gardening um, and plenty of compost. They do need a lot of compost. I think um, Stuart said he had added four bags of compost. That's about 200 litres. That's a lot of compost. And he's a lot of, he says he's getting there slowly, managed to do more than an hour. With the last few, well, last few months with it being so wet, it is a struggle, isn't it? But um, now the weather is getting on our side, it can definitely start to make things better. Uh, Stephen, he is clearing his land. I, I couldn't work out if this was an allotment or in his own garden. Either way, it's a huge area of land that he's going to be turning into growing space certainly going to be very very busy to say the least uh, scott is making some a cold frame from all this twin wall polycarbonate that's what i need that's what i need for next week's mission let's see if we can find any for the next week and kate she's got her first raised bed built she's just moved into a new garden straight away in with a raised bed i think what is it last week you moved in and already Get out there in the garden. Um, Bellows has just got his first tomato just before going away. <coughs> Always way, isn't it? He's going away and he's just got his first tomato. Uh, Bethan, last week she mentioned about her peppers and what that fact that they were fruiting. She was asking whether or not to take them off. Now we can see the pictures. I can say take them off. But she's running an experiment to see 
just how well they get on. Uh, keep sharing these photos, post them in our Facebook group, send to me via social media, or email me richard at adventuregroundpodcast.co.uk. That's richard at adventuregroundpodcast.co.uk. Uh, Turbo Stream says, Are you sending squash seeds this year and when? Last year, uh, they didn't have time to mature up here in Birmingham. Uh, so Last year, I sent out the butternut squash, wasn't it? I sent them out in June, and they were meant to be sown right at the beginning of June because I was trying to factor in those that were the are uh, up north. I think I'm sending them out in May, if I remember correctly. I'm trying to remember what I what I've got downstairs. I think I'm sending them out in May, a little bit earlier this year, but I would sow them towards the end. Um, but I think I sent them out in June last year. I remember you saying it was a, was a little bit too late for you, but it's a difficult one to try and get right, I think. In fact, talking of, of squash, things like butternut squash or winter squash, that's something we haven't really discussed tonight, is it? Winter squash, do we grow winter squash? Is that a winter veg? I think it is. Things like butternut squash, uh, pumpkins, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know what I mean. Um, Lobman Cook says, hate marrow chutney, marrow chili jam, really dislike them. This is a recipe veg, veg, blah, 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 blah. did a recipe video years ago, not my thing at all. Yeah, is that flicker again? Um, I, I'm not a lover of marrow either. I mean, I think I prefer courgettes, um, but I'm not a fan of marrow either, so I'm with you. But we're gonna, next week. Next week, we're going to discuss that. Digwell says, if World War Three happens, I could probably do without mashed potato. It's gonna, I don't think it is going to happen. It's all the scaremongering and everything going on at the moment. But it does, does make you think, what would happen if it did break out? Would we have to go to dig for victory again? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Um... What have we got? Ian Bello says, uh, just remembered to like the show. Please do yes. Please do like. Please do follow. Please do subscribe. Don't forget to click the notification so that you know when we go live. Please do give us a like. Give us a thumbs up. It really does help. Stuart Jackson's got to go. See you all next week. You take care, buddy. Lovely to see you. Uh, I've sown all my squash probably too early, but they are in the greenhouse until early May. Again, I do pumpkins. Pumpkins go out next in May, and I think butternut squash as well, just because they grow so quick. I don't, if everybody, if somebody hasn't got a greenhouse, I want these to be able to go outside when I send them out. So that, that's why we, we, once the risk of frost has passed. Um, courgettes as well, I think. I can't remember now, but I oh know we did pumpkins this week, this month, didn't we? Turbo Streams, this is completely random today, isn't it? Sorry. Turbo Streams says, yes, last year they fruited in October and were the size of a pea. Perhaps it was a rubbish summer we had. It probably was the summer in the honesty as well. Um, <coughs> <coughs> yeah. Um, it probably was the summer you know, that we had. Uh, what have we got? Rob says, never tasted squash or pumpkin. You're missing out. The key thing with pumpkin, though, I will say this. If you go to a supermarket and you buy the pumpkins that they sell for carving, they are not the best tasting. If you get something like the Crown Prince pumpkin, which is absolutely delicious, they are, excuse me, they are so much better than the, the ones for carving. They taste, taste, they taste so much more sweet, so much more fruitier. They are much, much better. Um, there's a few others. Um, Rouge de Vivid Tempus is another one that is also really good tasting uh, as pumpkins. But the ones that are for, um, for carving, not very tasteful. Uh, winter squash pumpkin is a crop harvested to eat in the winter, not really cropped in winter. Yeah, yeah, okay. We'll scrub that one off this list then. But yeah, with you, with you. Turbo Stream says, I make a sausage bake with butternut squash. It's really nice. 
and Bethan's Kitchen and Garden. The Crown Prince squash has been delicious this year. I'm just using the last one up. I'm sad to see it go. And so I mean, Crown Prince pumpkin are absolutely delicious. Well worth growing if you can grow some. Um, just so tasty. Just so much tastier than those ones that are designed for carving. Right, now, you sent me a challenge last year. I think this was Nigel who set this challenge for testing my soil. So what I've got, I've got a testing kit here. Now, this is a pH testing. I've been to several garden centers again this week to try and find somewhere that sells the soil testing seeds for um, uh, for nitrogen and everything else. I couldn't find any, but I've got this soil testing. I, I, earlier today, I've put in... If you can, I don't know if you can see that. I've put in some. I'll tell you what, is it this one? I've put in some com, some compost or some soil from my garden, and we're going to test it live on the show. What I've got to do, I've got this tiny little spoon, and I've got this stuff, barium sulfate, which we then add a teaspoon of this to the soil. Like that looks a bit like uh, something that people would stick up their noses doing it like that, doesn't it? <clears throat> Trust me, it's not. It's the stuff it said. And then we've got this liquid. Uh, how much do we add? add a sp we've got this liquid that we add. I'm just trying to remember how much we add to it. Um, a two and a half mil now. Take it up to two and a half mil. Give it a good shake. This is all live on camera, of course. There was that flicker again. That's about right. We're going to put that, put the lid on and give it a good shake. Now we're just going to leave that to settle. And we'll see what colour it goes to work out the pH of my soil. Now, if this works, we will we will see. Uh, and whether you think that is oh, wrong one, whether you think that is a mission past is up to you. Scott says strawberry crown squash from Premier Seeds are amazing. Grew them last year and they tasted great. I haven't seen those. I have to look into those, but they taste sound great. Uh, Digwell says, I make a squash bake with sausage. It's making me hungry again. I've had my dinner, but you're making me hungry again. Uh, Turbo Stream says, you would Digwell just to confuse a hapless brummy. <laughs> of course, of course. All right, that is actually looking like it's more or less settled. And I would say, looking at that, we've got a scale chart here got a scale here i would say that that's between neutral and alkaline let's switch it over to see if we can get a better look almost on the alkalines i would say that's closer to alkaline than anything else which makes sense our soil here can be quite alkaline, which is great for growing brassicas such as our winter crops that we're talking about here um could do with things being a bit more acidic or a bit more neutral, but that's that's not what we got. The, the soil here wasn't from my brassica bed either, so I haven't added lime to the soil. Um, that's just straight out of the garden. Uh, Digwell says, guessing pH 7, which you are, it's more 7.5 looking at this scale, 7.5 looking at that scale. So slightly different, but close. It's pretty close to seven. Jenny says, we still have crown prints and blue banana squash left. I'm dreading using them. May wait until the new ones are forming well. They've got to be eaten at some point. That being said, I have managed to keep butternut squash for about 18 months before they started to go. So they can last for quite a long time, these winter veg. 
Uh, Jenny says, I agree. The strawberry crown is amazing. Autumn crown is nice as well. Um, or as whoops as well. Yeah, I mean, they're all amazing, aren't they, these squash plants that we get. Um, I did have something else I wanted to, to quickly throw out there, and I've forgotten it. I can't remember what it was. Then you hate it when that happens, when something just goes out of your brain. You have, you have it a second ago, and then something comes along and causes it to go. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I forgot any. Uh, oh, yeah. Just wet my whistle slightly. Uh, so I'm just going to check that again. It hasn't really changed colour much. That's more on the alkaline side, my 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 soil. So interesting. I think that's very interesting. Would have been good to do a test with nitrogen and everything else, uh, but I couldn't get hold of one of those kits. Um, back to winter veg. Has anybody else got a winter veg that we haven't mentioned that you've discovered can actually grow quite well throughout the winter? Uh, any any ideas? Any thoughts on that? Um, maybe you wanted everyone to remind everyone to hit the like button yeah please do hit the like button please do give us a, a, a thumbs up a follow a subscribe click the notifications so that you know when we go live we go live every sunday at six but it's still good to get that notifications just to remind you when we go live um yeah i can't remember what it was i hate it when that happens i hate it when i just forget something that i was going to say that's the joys of add sometimes it, it really does just go out your brain in a second um it's not even on my notes so i, I don't know what it was it better uh, says can't remember why i'm watching this must have known when i started it's an age thing oh you've just reminded me what i was um i was going to say uh, we 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 were talking about our melon jokes in the past, haven't we? How we're growing some lovely melons and stuff like that. Uh, has anybody sown any of their melons yet? Uh, but yesterday when um, Amanda and I was in a garden centre, we were making some jokes. It's my birthday on Tuesday and she just she wanted to buy me, well, I wanted a new garden hoe after my garden hoe broke in the garden. Um, and we were making a few jokes about how she's brought me a hoe for my birthday and, and things like that. You can imagine, you can just imagine where the jokes were leading with that between me and my wife. We're grown ups, honestly. We are, really are grown ups. Turbo Stream says winter lettuce, but obviously I can't grow it. I think you could. I think you could. I think your problem is just gets too hot in the sun in your porch. You might just need to shade it out a little bit to try and cool it down for your lettuce. I honestly do think that's the problem. I could be wrong, of course, but I do think that is the problem. Digwell says it's too early for melons. I sowed some melons two, three weeks ago. They're growing quite nicely, I have to say. I do need to pop them up, actually. Um, but they to go. they'll be outside, but in the greenhouse as well. Uh, but they are they aren't outside yet. They're not definitely not outside yet. Tilly Kate says, I've got a tray ready to plant melon after dinner. Oh, might be a little bit too cold for melons outside. Are they to go in your greenhouse or something, though, Chili Kate? Or are, are you talking about the seeds? Or just potting them up? Let us know. Let us know. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um Jenny says, my melons have been sown and enjoying the warmth of the sun. When they have germinated, I will post a photo and you can admire my melons. Stop it now. <laughs> I won't. We all know we all know the uh, the jokes about the melons once they start. Scott says, I've sown melons, germinated and in the greenhouse. Excellent. Excellent. Again, melons are one of those, I think, Digwell's right to say it's too early for some melons, but if you do have a greenhouse or you do have sunny spots, it's one of those, isn't it? Some people get away with it, some people don't. There's no hard and fast rule with, with it. Uh, Bethan says, I think I will sow my melons, cucumbers and squashes towards the end of this month. It still feels too cold where I am. Yeah, I mean, I've got my, my 
cucumbers and squashes. I've started sowing them, but we're sowing more as we go along as well. Chili cake says plant seeds inside to go outside the end of May. That's about right. I would pop mine outside. So I can my nose has just gone itchy. I would pop mine outside around mid-May to the end of May as well. But I want to get them in the greenhouse um, first and foremost. I don't know about anybody else. I've just planted up today. It's why I was so muddy in that video. Planted up the tomatoes in the greenhouse as well to try and get them ready for actual growing stuff. Jenny says, my teenage daughter has just told me off what for telling us about your melons. I was expecting to get told off about the home my wife had paid for. Um, you know, God, the lovely jokes. I'm probably going to get kicked off Facebook for saying that now, actually. That's one of those words that is a trigger word for them. Talking, actually, one of the things we do need to show, we've got some harvest photos that have came in uh, this week. And uh, they have came from Chili Kate, if I remember correctly. She's had to remove the last of her leeks to make way for her potatoes. But I think that's a good thing. That shows just how long leeks can be in the ground for before you need to remove them. Um, you know, they were probably sown this time last year, maybe a little bit later, but there they are still harvestable, still edible, picked out the ground and probably absolutely delicious. She's also picked some lovely rhubarb. Look, rhubarb is really early this year, I've noticed. We're picking loads of it at the moment, more than what we know what to do with. So we're going to be freezing down loads of rhubarb. But if you do want a good rhubarb recipe, particularly turning it into like a barbecue rhubarb sauce to put on pork chops when you're barbecuing. There is a recipe from Scott, uh, both on the vegetablepodcast.co.uk and also on his uh, Instagram seat table plot 13, if you're looking for a good recipe for, to do with rhubarb. Uh, in Beno says, itchy nose means you're going to have an argument. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Who am I going to have an argument with? Who, who's going to argue with me? Chili Phil says, I'm cooking those leeks she harvested for dinner as I watch the show. Delicious. What are you, what are you just cooking them? Are you doing anything special with those leeks? Cheesy leeks, leek and bacon? Let us know what you're doing with them. So we can all get hungry once again. Um, what else was I going to say? What else was I going to say? So next week, we pretty much covered it all haven't we we've said that we're going to be talking about I'll make a note of this unliked veg we're going to be sowing pumpkins and make a cold frame as the mission we were organized for once we've actually got a bit of organization going on he can believe that i haven't got to try and push for it uh oh i've read that one i've remembered another thing that i was going to say as well i had a Something came up on my Facebook feed uh, this week. I can't remember when it was. Um, talking about, um, it was a, asking live streamers if they would do a live stream for length for Age UK. And they were looking for live streamers to do six hours, 12 hours, or 24 hours. Got me thinking about, oh, it would have been just under four years ago when we did our 24 hour live with with lee um i i, I kind of want to do it again although i remember just how pain how much pain i was in afterwards and um how tired i was afterwards but i kind of want to do that again for charity try and do a, a long stretch of live streaming chili phil says links mushroom and peas in creme fraiche and dijon mustard sauce to serve with pork chops sounds delicious except for the mushrooms um at all chili cake says i've noticed lots of rhubarb on our site not ours potting up flowers do you think it's under stress because it's too early it seems to be the biggest plants i do think it's under stress because it's too early mine did pot up a couple of flowers which i have since removed um but i i do find that when they are growing this early pretty much every year they do seem to be under stress i think it's too cold at night for them slightly too wet, followed by dry weather, but they will sort themselves out and just continue to grow. Um, let's see what happens. Uh, 
but, but no. Scott says to Ginny for a great combination. Can I pop around now for dinner? Yeah. If it wasn't for the mushrooms, I would be asking the same. Jenny says 24 hour a lot of live streaming would be good. We did do that 24 hour. It was in in the sheds and stuff. Um, it was May 2020, wasn't it? Because I was on furlough. That's the only way I could do it. But it was hard. I've got to say the actual day to wait for 24 hours wasn't too bad. It was afterwards when we finished and everything else. So I, remember, I just remember how hard that was. And I, I'm I'm not as young as I used to be. In the, my old days, when I was younger, I used to be able to go clubbing and then still go back to work. Couldn't do that anymore. Kate says, my rhubarb flowers too. I snapped it off. Now in the ground and looking a bit sad, but I expect it to bounce back. Give it a good watering and a good bit of feed with something like chicken manure pellets or a good load of compost as well to try and just get a bit of feed into it. That might just help it if it is looking a bit sad. It will bounce back. Rhubarb is probably one of the toughest plants to grow. We used to have rhubarb grown in my um, my mum's house. And my uh, The person who lived in there before, Grew, obviously grew it he he grew a lot of vegetables in that garden but my, my stepdad would take the lawnmower to it to cut it down just he wasn't yeah, interested in it well um it still kept coming back even though there was nothing of it he just kept coming back rhubarb is so hard to kill just keeps coming back and back and back so i think it's a fantastic plant i've got to say i love rhubarb rhubarb crumble rhubarb you know it it just delicious. Talking of take talking of rhubarb, my little supporters club rhubarb seedlings are growing slow but strong and healthy. Also, the asparagus seeds are doing well, aren't they? Just I've grown those for two years running, and I'm always amazed just how easy rhubarb and asparagus is to grow from seed. And the our seedlings are doing fantastic. Rhubarb, asparagus. Uh, even last year's ones are doing fantastic as well. We're hoping to get them into the ground fairly soon. We've got to build one more bed so before we can do that, the asparagus bed. But yeah, um, in fact, in fact, it really is easy to grow these from seed. really is. Thermo Stream says, I used to work nights in my 20s. Now I'm in my 50s. I'm in bed by 9 p.m. I'm the same. Not, not quite in bed by 9 p.m., but I, I know what you mean. It, it just don't seem to work anymore. Uh, uh Ibedo says, remember the 24-hour show? I had to have a sleep, or did you two <laughs> send me to sleep? We probably sent you to sleep, to be honest, didn't we? Um, I don't know how we did it. I really don't know how we did it. Uh, we did, we keep talking about doing it again. We just haven't got around to sorting it out. Tilly Gates says, our oh, asparagus seedlings are doing great too. Fantastic. Um Denny says, can you all go on your allotment at any time of day or night? Do you have a time limit rules? Um, we don't have time limits, I believe, on my allotment, but you never know. Police could turn up one day and tell us to move on. So I've no chance of even watching a 24-hour live stream. Yeah, I, I know, exactly. Jenny Kate, we can go at any time, Jenny, but have to lock up after 7 p.m. in the summer and 4 p.m. in the winter. Yeah, yeah, our, our gates are always locked, except when on a Sunday morning when the uh, shop is open. Oh, lovely, lovely. Right, so we've got 10 minutes left of tonight's show. Does anybody else want to add anything to our main topic of discussion of winter veg? Um, any winter veg that we haven't discussed or thought of, something you've found to grow quite well, or anything like that. Jenny Phil says, I planted the cumin seeds this week from a supporters club. How long before I start seeing anything pop up? I would say about two weeks, maybe three weeks. Um, be patient, maybe quicker, but two to three weeks is what I would expect before you start to see them pop up. Um, I love love the cumin seeds, don't I? and it just smells so delicious. I can't wait to actually produce cumin seeds uh, for our own for our own herbs. Is it herb spice? One of the two. You know what I mean? We we get into that discussion again where we what's a herb and what's a spice. 
And for those that don't know, the supporters club that Tilly Phil was alluding to is a club that I've set up to help run the podcast. Um, basically, for five pound a month you, to become a member, details at theventuregroundpodcast.co.uk. Before you get extra behind the scenes podcasts, as well as several packets of seeds sent to your door every month that you are a member, all for just five pound a month. It's actually, I think, it's a bargain in all honesty. I don't think you could buy those seeds for five pound a month on their own. Um, but we, we're always trying to make add other things to it as well. Go into pot the cumin near my Szechuan pepper and have a little spice area. Cumin is definitely a spice. Thank you. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Um, Szechuan pepper. My Szechuan pepper at the moment, I've had to move it out the front. It's like getting really, really tall with some really thick, nasty spikes on them. I love, I can't, I'm hoping this year, I've been growing out three years now i'm hoping this year we are going to be able to actually get some peppers from it some session pepper from it but it is a fantastic fantastic looking tree shrub it's 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 great I can't, i'm so glad i brought this session tree um looking forward to it nicholas says sorry i'm so late pigs escaped we'll watch the repeat no problem, Nicola. Nicola's just got pigs on her farm to to help. And this is something I remember hearing years ago with people with allotment sites that had pigs on them. The pigs would go onto the empty sites to kill or eat up all the weeds. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I think it's great to really work the land to try and clear all the weeds using natural methods such as pigs or chickens. <coughs> Digwell says uh, to Chili Phil about the cumin, great as a microgreen, just stolen from a supermarket packet. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Jenny says, I love growing cumin, great for wildlife too. Our gates are always locked if you are the last to leave any time of day, same as us. Uh, Kate says, did you catch the pigs okay, Nicola? Good question. I didn't ask that. Did you catch the pigs okay, Nicola? Are they back in there, the pig sty and, 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 and what have you? Uh, Dermot Stream says, as I found out this week, five pounds for six packs of seeds is amazing value compared with two twenty-five for one pack of lattice to feed the slugs. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I've got to admit, I think it. it I, I mean, I would say it because it kind of funds the podcast, helps me keep the website running, uh, and, and pay for all the the music things and things like that. Uh, and that's the reason why I run the podcast. And even the software for all this this streaming is is funded through that, so it does help. It does massively help. Jenny Phil says, "Not sure all the supermarket cumin seeds will germinate due to the heat treatment process they go through." Interesting, interesting. That'd be an experiment to try one day. See if it does make a difference. All those Rob says, "All those pork chops Chili Phil is cooking." Talking about the pigs running around as well. Are those the pork chops Chili Phil is cooking? Um, good point, good point. I don't think so. I don't think they're quite that fresh. We have keys for the allotment gate, so in theory we could go any time. Yeah, I think ours. Some some allotments do say you can't be down there when it's dark. And I think the idea is if you have an accident, nobody's going to see you. Jenny says, local old council house gardens had a path down the middle, one side to grow veg and the other for the pigs. Next growing season, they switched over. Great idea. Yeah, I, I, pigs are great if you've got the space and the ability to look after them. They are great. They're just not, oh, just not something I could have here at home. Uh, maybe when we get a bit of land. Digwell says, do they sell well? Mine do. They sell well. Oh, yeah. Talking about the cumin, that is. Got to have the veggies. Oh, oh dear, dear. Uh, Nicola, they hear my voice up with the ponies and came over the hedge wall to visit. By the time I got back with some pig nuts, they were back in their enclosure. New electric fencing at top of the field now. Good to hear. Good to hear. Got to make sure they're secure, haven't we? They're, they're, they're very tough animals. They can knock down fences quite easily. They're strong and they will knock down fences. Um, you don't want that with any animal. You don't want them escaping and running out in the road and doing going in places that they shouldn't. 
Toby Stream says, in the Weir Forest, they cleared the barrels with pigs one year to return the forest to a more natural state. That doesn't surprise me. There was a, a, a seminar I, I listened to about, it was more in the permaculture talk, actually. And the person was sort of saying, well, somebody asked the question, they had loads of brambles and weeds on their, their garden, and what could they do, do to clear them? And the guy said, well, if you can't have pigs, act like a pig and just clear everything out all the time uh it makes sense pigs pigs are great if you want to clear land as are chickens as well once you've got get the pigs through then the chickens and then you um, have some amazing clear land plus they uh renew the area as well and clear it up um adrian says good night richard and all he's off good night you take care buddy we still got a few minutes to go so we won't wrap it up just yet um rob says pigs are vicious they can be can't they especially the wild boars they they are known to uh attack humans so they are vicious jenny says traditional dead head, head blah, blah, blah. traditional dead hedge fencing was for pigs they can't push through them very dense and locking branches yeah it's the same as um um i think they used to use sheep wasn't it in the graveyards and that's why they all have walls around them to keep the sheep in but they used to allow sheep maybe i would have thought sheep not pigs um they, they would let the sheep sheep in to cut keep the grass down and tidy in the old days before lawnmowers were invented um animals animal i mean we are talking about vegetable gardening here but animals do play quite an important role in helping with our our, our allotments and or our gardens as well um oh I, I know um quite rightly vegans will be against it quite rightly i don't quite agree but i would sooner have sheep or pigs grazing then trying to get tractors in and stuff like that to be honest um much more natural much more gonna do the world of good whereas a tractor i mean tractors have a place don't get me wrong but they would be much more much more eco-friendly much more doing a job for you i guess is what i'm trying to say i'm losing my train of thought anyway but we are, well, how long have we been going? We've got just over a minute to go. So we might as well start thinking about wrapping up. So next week, we're going to be talking about what vegetables do you not like to grow? Or what vegetables do you not like? Um, we're going to be sowing some pumpkins, which might be which might be a vegetable you don't like. And we're going to be making a cold frame as part of the mission. Lot to get through next week. Uh, Jenny says sheep's were the, are the first lawnmowers for churchyards and stately homes. Yeah, absolutely. And then they started stately homes. They would use elephants to pull lawnmowers as well, believe it or not. Um, getting right into my history here. But yeah, elephants to walk across their lawn pulling these lawnmowers. Um, early adaptions of lawnmowers. Uh, Nigel says, I know a few pot plots where the pigs would improve it if let loose. Yeah, I know a few plots as well. This is what I'm saying. I think there is a lot of, a um, lot of cool or things like that. Uh, just seeing Andrew Norris. Night, night, everyone. Thanks, Richard. I didn't, didn't see you there, buddy. Hope you are well. Nice to see you. Toby Stream says, have a good week, everyone. And, uh, Rob says, see you, Toby Stream. Take care. <laughs> see you, Rob conversation going on but it is now half past seven it is time to pack up and get out of here we will be back again next week at six where we're going to be talking about unliked vegetables um please do feel free as always to suggest some ideas get in touch and get some of, of subjects that we can talk about anything you want to talk about as well it's a very fluid chat as you know it's very much led by what you guys say anyway my guys um oh andrew says i've been here from the beginning you skipped my hello i didn't see it i'm sorry i try and i always try and keep it make sure i see everybody um i didn't see it sorry i can only apologize but thanks so much for being there anyway right guys you take care and i will speak to you again 
next Sunday at 6 p.m.